Hey, we got a treat for you today. This is pretty special. Notice I'm not on Johnny today. <laughs> got a different rig here. We have Aaron with us from Ventrac. That's a nice shirt, Aaron. I need one of those. We can probably hook you up later. <laughs> in, fact, we, in fact, we can. <laughs> and Dan with uh, Christian Children's Home, right? Absolutely, yeah. So Aaron invited us out to see what this Ventrac tractor was all about. And first he said something about uh, getting together and doing some playing out on their test track. And I said, you know what? A test track's nice and all, but let's actually find a real project where we actually need to solve a customer problem. And uh, Dan has just that problem here. That's right. We've got a field here that needs to be cleaned up. Yeah, we've already got started a little bit, and we're just now uh, kind of introducing you to it. This Ventrac is, well, I was concerned that it wasn't a real tractor. It just looks different than a tractor, right? We hear it all the time. Yeah. What's that cute little thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's a diesel, a Kubota diesel, about 25 horsepower. Yeah. It handles easily. It's, uh, it's nimble. It gets the job done. We're going to see all kinds of attachments, and if not in this video, in another video. Okay, let's get started. Sure. I'm Dan Franks. I'm the Community Development Manager for the uh, Christian Children's Home of Ohio. We call this a residential program where we have uh, children who've been abused or neglected uh, throughout the state can come here. So they've suffered a higher level of trauma, and so while they're here, we have therapists, we have all sorts of counseling opportunities. Wow. We're also helping them with education. Most kids that come to us are about two to three grade levels behind where they should be at their age. So we have a partnership with the Summit Academy that comes on campus and aids with the education so we can close that gap. Uh, our goal here is not just to be a band-aid for the child. We are wanting them to thrive, not just survive. So we want them to discover their worth in Christ. We want them to get to a healthy place. Right now in the state of Ohio, there's 12,500 kids in the temporary custody of the state. There's an additional 2,500 children who are in the permanent custody of the state, which means they're just waiting to be adopted. That's 15,000 wow. children in our state, bigger than many of our towns in this state, that you could have filled with children who are in need of a loving family. And we just in the past year launched a what we call Thrive Trauma Recovery, and it is a type of uh, therapy that specifically for those who have suffered some sort of big trauma in their life. Wow. They go to school right here, just like a regular school. So on campus, we have kids from six years old up to 18 when you age out. Wow. So how many children can you accommodate here? We max at 36 children. In each of our cottages, we have four cottages. Okay. So we can go six to nine children per cottage. Okay. And then we divide by, obviously, gender. And then we have six to about 12 years old, and then the teenagers. So behind us we have a ball field. Yes. Is this just recreation for them or are they required to have some sort of physical activity? We do have someone who does all the special activities with the kids okay. because we know, we call it play therapy, is a way to develop certain social skills as you interact with other kids in atmospheres that they may not realize that they're learning yeah. and developing skills in. They are learning things like how to contain my emotions, how to take responsibility, how not to just lash out at someone else on the ball field, those kind of right. things. I think Aaron decided to come out and play too. <laughs> this is our first time playing with a Ventrac. Well, they've been very good to us and helping us with things over the years. So you are a Christian home. Are they asked to go to church or what's the, what's the requirement for the, yeah. the kids for that? Right. Now, we can't require kids to go to anything because okay. we do receive state funds, okay. but a lot of them do. Uh, so we do have church on campus. Okay. Uh, we have at times also taking the kids to church off campus. Okay. So we've been doing like Saturday afternoon services so people churches can help us sure. with our services that way. We have Bible studies and so forth as well. We really had a great move of God recently on our campus. So we've had at least four children recently get baptized. Uh, it's been exciting to see how it's working. Now we're even seeing in some cases with our teenage uh, girls, where it's not just the staff who's sharing about Christ, but those who have committed to Christ are now oh, wow. really sharing their experiences with the other girls. It's a great thing. Yeah. And we use the phrase a lot, helping the kids find their worth in Christ. A lot of kids will come here not feeling loved or that they are worthy of love. Right. That is not uncommon at all for the kids to come here thinking yeah. that. So we want them to know you are valuable. You are loved. Okay, so we're gonna let the master try it now. He said something about high range. I kind of got excited, but I think he's a little excited about that too. <laughs> high range is working range. One of the girls who gave her life to Christ, she came from a background that was very occultish. So she did not believe in God because she never seen God at work. She's okay. seen 
Satan at work. Yeah. So she understood that. So while she was here, and it wasn't even about people preaching at her, it was her just seeing the kindness and the love towards her right. that she saw God. Then she's like, God is real. And she ended up giving her life to Christ. I didn't tell you, but you may have noticed we have equine therapy here too. I forgot oh, to mention. Oh, nice. So we, so we have several horses. It's not just for the kids on campus, but also we have people off campus who come on. And then we have a sensory trail too that Girl Scouts built for us. So you ride the horse down a trail and you put your hand in, you can touch, you can smell, you can feel different oh, things wow. as you go. He's making you look like you're really <laughs> slow. I'm entirely outclassed here. I'm, I'm still in Ventrac 101. I believe he's a graduate student. Yeah. Power Rake did a great job of getting the weeds uprooted out of this field. Just we don't have a very good way of piling them and getting them off to the side so we can so we can haul them off. So we're gonna move on from this job for now. We got several other jobs we want to accomplish and we've only got this morning. So many toys, so little time. Yeah, this truly is a, a candy shop. I suspect he's going to want it a bit deeper. Sure enough. He just turns that, or cranks the dial, basically. Yeah. And that's going to lower it. That lowers the attachment, which, you know, effectively lowers it relative to the gauge wheels up there and the tractor wheels back here. The tiller would simply be useless here. So this is uh, quite a, quite an amazing tool there. Yeah. It really is able to work through those rocks. Those rocks. Pull that bricks. Yeah, he's got this lever on the left-hand side here, right above the, the 4500Y. And you pull that backwards and that makes it rotate the other direction. It's a little monster, isn't it? Just chewing it up. Yeah, it really is. And he's he's got it basically all the tractor wants at this point. This tractor's got a lot more hydraulic power than what, say, Johnny or any subcompact tractor would have. This thing is belt driven. Well, I've got a case of tractor envy and attachment envy here. This is a project I really couldn't do much with, with Johnny, with the current attachments that I have. The thing is, is they've got like 10 hours of work for us to do, don't they? And yeah. we have only a couple hours to do it. Yeah. So even with this Ventrac tractor, even with two Ventrac tractors, we're not gonna be able to no. get everything done they've got planned for us. So no. what's next? Uh, we're gonna grind some stumps. Okay. I saw this online, Christy, this stump grinder, and I figured out that that was a mirror on there, and I thought, well, that's not gonna work. But actually, the view is really good. Do you find that you're constantly full or are there kids on a waiting list? Or? We get more calls than when we have openings. We don't have every build, bed filled right now because we're not just going to fill a bed. So it has to be a good mix for the kids that are currently in that cottage. Also, there are certain people who won't necessarily um, thrive in this kind of atmosphere. Uh, kids can leave, uh, run off and so forth. And there are some people who need more of a lockdown type of a situation. Do you have adult both parents living in each of your cottages? So we are dealing with children here who've had um, a bigger level of trauma in their life. So right. they're going to act out in those yes. typical trauma ways. Yes. So that takes a lot. So now we do shifts. So we'll have a first shift, a second shift, an overnight shift to people. Okay. So like okay. in our first shift, we try to have three people in each cottage. So okay. if you max out in the cottage of nine children, we would have three staff people in there, one to okay. three ratio. Okay. Which is, by the way, much better than what we're required by state laws. We could have one to 10 awesome. because we want that kind of personal care. Now the question is, can I do it as good as you can? The opioid epidemic, human trafficking. A lot of people think of human trafficking as being something of grabbing children and taking them overseas. And the reality is most human trafficking is through family and friends putting kids into human trafficking. Some of those children end up with us here. We have 165 acres here uh, wow. on this campus. So if we went back into the woods, there's a ropes course. We used to have it open to the public, not so much anymore. We mostly just use it for our kids. So it's a team building exercise. It's a rock wall, it's a ropes course where you climb to the top and then you zip line down. And it really is a team building. I, I, when I watch the kids working together because one child might be tied trying to climb and then the, there has to be for safety reasons obviously people down the ground holding right. the rope and it is a team effort one child is climbing but everyone wants to see that child get to the, get top. To the top i'm going to go back over there and get dusty again he's really able to move a lot of dirt with it okay we need a name for this thing and i think we may call it vinny you know ventrac vinny Looks like you're getting the hang of it a little bit better. <laughs> this thing is a grinding machine, I'll tell you that. 
it's got the full three dimensions of motion. I mean, you can go up and back real easily, you can go up and down real easily, and you can go back and forth with that articulation. And that makes it so you can get through a, you know, a stump, just make it do anything you want once you learn the controls. It's very effective. Well, there it is. Uh, this is Lucas, Lucas Christie. Hi, how are you doing, Christy? A hand equipment deliverer. Yep. Today. Oh, thank <laughs> today. You Not a problem at all. So it looks like he can use that rake and rake up a bunch of big rocks and stuff over here in a pile that then we can pick up. Wow! Now Tim gets to play with the landscape rake. It's a lot faster than me doing it by hand. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Boy, that's working pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys, if you have big oak trees and lots of leaves in the fall, you need this. I grew up with having to rake a lot of leaves because of really big Oh, yeah. Oak trees, pecan trees, and uh, this would have been wonderful. Looks like it's time for a game. Yeah, this is this is really best done on a day that's a little bit grizzly or something. But yeah, work when you can. All I know is this is a project we can be proud of. Yeah. I mean, it's ready to play ball. I bet you're a pretty good ball player. Not bad. I'm okay. worthless <laughs> at softball, baseball, that kind of. I think I found my calling when it comes to, to ball. I think I could be on Take the landscaping the screw. Maybe. I mean, this Ventrac really got the job done. But right now, it's ready to play ball. Yeah, I mean, we may have to leave Aaron here, and he may have to do a little more hand raking. But you and me, we can go back to the factory and begin to have fun with some of their other products. OK. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> hey, everybody. Stay tuned for our next video. We're going to have more about the Ventrac. I hope you've enjoyed this, and Aaron, thanks for thanks Absolutely. for showing us. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor Time, time with Tim. With Tim. <laughs>